US President Joe Biden has called on the Republicans to work with him to finish the job of rebuilding the economy and uniting the nations in his pursuit to overcome pessimism in the country. In his second State of the Union address and the first after the Republicans took control of the House of Representatives in January, the U.S. President called for overcoming the differences in the bitterly divided Congress. Biden pledged to work with the opposition party and said, Story of America is a story of progress and resilience. He called U.S. democracy unbowed and unbroken and cited progress in a post-pandemic economy. U.S. President also vowed to defend U.S. sovereignty in the wake of an incursion by an alleged Chinese spy balloon. Mr. Biden's 72-minute address came as his public approval rating hovers near the lowest level of his presidency. In Turkey and Syria, the death toll due to massive earthquakes has soared to nearly 8,000 as rescue operations continue to find survivors. Turkey's vice president has said that more than 34,800 people were injured in the earthquakes. Such teams and international aid are pouring into Turkey and Syria as rescuers work in freezing temperatures to pull out survivors and victims. The 7.8 magnitude quake that hit the region on Monday toppled thousands of buildings. Unstable piles of metal and concrete made the search efforts perilous. So far, over 8,000 people have been pulled from the debris in Turkey alone and around 4 lakhs have taken refugee in government shelters or hotels. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan said 13 million of countries, 85 million people were affected due to earthquake. Erdogan has already declared a state of emergency in 10 provinces. European Union leaders will meet Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kyiv, bringing the promises of new sanctions against Russia, but likely dashing Ukraine's hope for swift EU membership. The head of the group's executive commission, Ursula von der, arrived in Kyiv by train on Thursday, a symbolic journey to demonstrate support for Ukraine as first anniversary of Russia's February 24, 2022 invasion of its neighbor approaches. Senior members of EU executive met their counterparts in Ukrainian government and von der and the chairman of 27 EU national leaders, Charles Michel, will convene talks with Zelensky. Zelensky called for more punitive measures against Russia by the European Union, but new sanctions the bloc is preparing for the anniversary are set to fall short of his government's demands. While EU backs Ukraine and supports democratic and economic reforms, there it declines to offer a fast track to membership while Ukraine is at war. EU officials have listed multiple entry requirements from political and economic stability to adopting various EU laws. The process is likely to take years. The last country to have joined the EU was Croatia in 2013, a decade after formally applying. Ukraine's neighbor Poland took 20 years until joining in 2004. GDP growth rate of Bangladesh was recorded at 7.10% for the financial year 2022, which marks an increase from 6.94% in the financial year 2021 and 3.45% in 2020. The Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics, in its latest report released on Sunday, calculated the per capita income of Bangladesh at USD 2,793. The per capita income for financial year 2021 was USD 2,591 and USD 2,326 for financial year 2020. However, the GDP growth rate is lower than the provisional estimate of 7.25% caused by the depreciation of Bangladesh Taka, 
against the US dollar. The service sector in Bangladesh economy was the biggest chunk of economy commanding a share of 51.48% followed by industry at 36.92% and agriculture at 11.61%. In terms of growth rate, the industrial sector recorded a growth rate of 9.86% in the financial year 2022, while services grew at 6.26% and agriculture at 3.05%. Planning Minister M. A. Mannan called the GDP growth rate as outstanding considering the current global situation, reports the official news agency. He said that in the current global situation of Russia-Ukraine war and aftermath of COVID-19 pandemic, the figures were quite good. Parvesh Mujara, former president of Pakistan, passed away from a prolonged illness on Sunday at a hospital in Dubai. He was 79. Musharraf had been undergoing treatment for an ailment at an American hospital, Dubai, reported the news. Musharraf has been declared a fugitive in the former Prime Minister Ben Sir Bhutto murder case and Red Moss Clare killing case. The former president living in Dubai since 2016 was facing a treason case for suspending the constitution in 2007. The former military ruler had left for Dubai in March 2016 for medical treatment and had not returned since. Musharraf was born on August 11, 1943 in Delhi and completed his early education at St. Patrick's High School in Karachi. The former president pursued higher education at Foreman Christian College in Lahore. NISA recently got a send-off ceremony at the American Space Agency's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California to be shipped to India in a special cargo container flight. NISAR is a low earth orbit observatory jointly developed by NASA and ISRO. It is an SUV sized satellite weighing 2,800 kilograms. It consists of both L band and S band synthetic aperture radar instruments, which makes it a dual frequency imaging radar satellite. NISAR will be the first satellite mission to use two different radar frequencies, L band and S band. To measure changes in our planet surface, SAR is capable of penetrating clouds and can collect data day and night regardless of the weather conditions. NASA has approved the L-band radar, GPS and high capacity solid state recorder to store data and a payload data subsystem. ISRO has provided S-band radar, GSLV launch system and spacecraft. It also consists of a large 39-foot stationary antenna reflector made up of gold-plated wire mesh which will be used to focus the radar signals emitted and received by the upward-facing feed on the instrument structure. It will measure Earth's changing ecosystems, dynamic surfaces and ice masses, providing information about biogas, natural hazards, sea level rise and groundwater. NISAR will observe Earth's land and ice-covered surfaces globally with 12 days regularity on ascending and descending paces. Sri Lankan government is considering closing down or suspending the operations of certain project officers and project management units of large-scale development projects. Cabinet spokesman and minister Dr. Gunavardhana told the media that a proposal in this regard was presented by President Ranil Vikrame Singh taking into account Sri Lanka's economic crisis. Dr. Gunavardhana said that these officers are operating with specialists and consultants recruited for high salaries. He added that country is in a situation where so many project officers cannot be operated due to economic crisis. Last year, a committee examined the necessity of such officers and recommended closing down 55 officers and suspending the operations of 
32 officers. Cabinet spokesman said that many ministers pointed out that efforts are being made to run these officers efficiently. He further said that, in a view of the assertion made by the minister, the president ordered them to hold discussions with the finance ministry to identify which officers can be closed down and which can be operated. China strongly protested over U.S. shooting down a Chinese surveillance balloon over the Atlantic Ocean after it traversed sensitive military sites across North America. The Chinese Foreign Ministry in a statement on Sunday said, China strongly disapproves and protests against the U.S. attack on a civilian unmanned airship by force and warned of repercussions. After President Biden's order, the U.S. shot down the suspected Chinese spy balloon Saturday off the coast of state of South Carolina when it was over the shallow waters in the Atlantic Ocean. An operation is underway to recover debris. The Chinese Foreign Ministry said that the Chinese side has clearly asked the U.S. side to properly handle the matter in a calm, professional and restrained manner. Under the circumstances, U.S. side's insistence on using force in an obvious overreaction and a serious violation of international practice, the ministry said, adding that China will resolutely safeguard the legitimate rights and interests of the companies concerned while reserving the right to make further necessary responses. The presence of the balloon in the U.S. airspace this week made global headlines and became the latest flashpoint in already strained U.S.-Chinese relations for years, which led to abrupt cancellation of Secretary of State Antony Blinken's much-awaited visit to Beijing, aimed at enhancing the communication and understanding. The Australian government will roll out the fifth dose of COVID-19 vaccine later this month to all citizens aged 18 and above. Australian Health Minister said that the decision expands eligibility for the booster shot to include about 14 million people. Health Minister said all adults who have not had a booster or a confirmed case of COVID-19 in the past six months will be eligible for another dose from 20th of February. Only severely immunocompromised people had been recommended to take a fifth dose until now, the advice being received the booster three months after their fourth shot. Australia, which is among the most heavily vaccinated countries against coronavirus, has so far administered two vaccine doses to 95% of people above 16. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikrame Singh has said that if the island nation sticks to the plan, it will rise out of bankruptcy by 2026. He added that economy can be stabilized by obtaining the IMF package. While delivering the government's policy statement at the parliament yesterday, Mr. Ranil Vikrame Singh said that he is ready to take unpopular decisions for the sake of the nation. On the tax rate hikes, the president said that the country will set to lose 16,300 crore Sri Lankan rupees if taxes are raised. He added that the revenue currently stands at 8.15% of the GDP while he is targeting to increase it till 15%. He further said that if the current recovery continues, the government would be able to give additional allowances to public servants and concessions for the private sector in later half of the year. He hinted that through such measures, incomes can be increased by 70% in another three years. Mr. Vikrame Singh added that the measures adopted by his government have eased inflation from 70% to 54%. He expressed hope that he will strive to bring it to single digit by the end of 2023. He informed the parliament that the forex reserves which had hit zero have reached $500 million now. 
He said the local entrepreneurs had worked hard to increase exports to $13 billion. He said that the tourism sector has also revived with 1 lakh tourist arrivals in January. Mr. Vikram Singh also elaborated on the implementation of a plan for development of the northern part of the island. He said that considering several facts, devolution of power within a unitary state is expected. IMF rejects Pakistan's circular debt management plan for a potential bailout in $7 billion loan program. In Sri Lanka, the depression over Bay of Bengal has made landfall at the east coast of Sri Lanka and is moving across the island. Cloudy sky will prevail over most parts of the island and thunder showers with over 100 mm of rain and strong winds are expected. The chief of SpaceX recently said that SpaceX may attempt a Starship rocket system launch in March. Astronomers have recently discovered Wolf 1069b, an Earth mass exoplanet that could potentially be habitable. Turkey hauls crude oil flows to export terminals on Mediterranean coast after quake. Death toll in Turkey and Syria earthquakes crosses 17,000.